Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about the Solana ecosystem. Now this video is not meant to be a complete guide to every single thing on Solana, but it is going to inform you on whether or not it's worth it for you to bridge funds over and test out the ecosystem. Now, as you can see here on this chart, Solana has really climbed amongst the ranks of different blockchains. So right now you can see it's ranked number three behind Ethereum and Binance. So there really is quite a bit of TVL on the blockchain. So to help you decide whether the Solana ecosystem is something you want to invest in or bridge funds over to, I'm just going to go over some of the top applications that are on Solana right now. And of course, the links are going to be below if you want to check out any of these charts or visit the protocols themselves. Now I'm going to start with covering Solen, which is a money market for Solana. So here you can deposit assets and borrow against your collateral. So you don't have to sell your, say, Ethereum or Bitcoin to test out Solana. You can put it up as collateral and then borrow against it. You can see here depositing ETH will get you a supply APY of about 3%. And then you can borrow against that and you can see the APYs on the right here. Now there is another money market called Port Finance, but at the time of this video, Port does not allow you to post ETH as collateral and borrow against that. So I figured best to just cover this because I think a lot of folks are going to be doing that. So next up is one of the most popular apps in Solana and that's called Sabre. Now Sabre is very similar to Curve. Now if you're not familiar with Curve or Sabre, it's essentially a way to provide liquidity for pegged assets. So you can see they have pairs here like USDT, USDC, and BTC and REN BTC. So as long as the assets are supposed to be the same price, you can provide liquidity here and get a yield for it. So as you can see here, I'm on the farms tab and basically there are incentives to provide liquidity here. So you can see for BTC, for example, you can get about 7%. For UST, USDC, you can get about 13%, and there's other yields for different pegged assets. Now, at the time of recording this video, it looks like the highest stablecoin yield here is 28% for FRAX USDC, so pretty solid, but not, you know, absolutely phenomenal. Now, next up is Radium, which, as you can see here, is one of the main AMMs on Solana. So, as you can see here, there's the basic swap feature for Solana, and of course, you can provide liquidity to different pools here. So, you can see uh, there is quite a bit of liquidity here and a lot of of TVL. If I move over to the farms tab, you can see that there are actually incentives for liquidity. Um, depending on what tokens you want exposure to, some of these yields could be compelling. Now, as you guys know, I do have quite a bit of a bias towards ETH. So something I might be interested in is this Ray ETH pool. Uh, not too sure if I want to hold the Radium token, which is the governance token for this AMM, but getting a 77% or so APR on this is pretty compelling, and that is good. Radium, of course, does have single staking here, so you can stake any Ray that you've received from providing liquidity. And one other interesting thing I did want to cover is they do have an accelerator, which I think is a pretty novel idea and is pretty cool. If you're interested in learning more about Radium, I'll include a Medium post that explains exactly how it works, but uh, it is pretty interesting. There's a lottery mechanism behind it so definitely make you make sure you have a good understanding before you enter it um, perhaps this would be a good option for a future video so if you're interested in seeing a full breakdown on this leave a comment below so next up i wanted to cover soul farm which i think has some of the coolest opportunities on solana right now so soul farm if you're not familiar is a yield aggregator for radium and saber and what it allows users to do is get leverage on liquidity positions so here i am on the leverage farming page and you can see the APYs are very high. This is all with triple leverage, so it's going to be very risky here. But the benefit of Soul Farm is you don't actually have to participate in that leverage farming. You can actually lend out your assets to people that want leverage for a pretty high yield. So I will just click on lending here, and just off the bat, you can see the APYs for a single staking lending are really high. So I'm just gonna sort them from highest to least. And you can see there are some more niche coins that you can lend out, but even USDC is getting about a 17% APY and ETH itself is getting 13.4%, which is really good. I don't know if these yields are high enough to get folks to bridge over, uh, but they are on the higher side, especially for single staking ETH. So next up, I wanted to cover Mango, which is essentially an order book style exchange for Solana. So I'm not gonna spend too much time covering Mango here, but you can see they have more of an advanced dashboard and they do have features like limit orders, which is cool. And I should point out that they also have a perpetuals product for BTC, which is quite interesting. 
I think most folks aren't going to be too, too interested in this, but it is there if you're interested. Now, the last app I wanted to cover is called Marinade. Now, Marinade is going to be the most popular solution for staking Sol. So the stake Sol you put in Marinade would be used to validate transactions. And you can see right now it's getting about a 6.2% APY with $373 million of TVL. One cool thing here is if I hit start staking Sol, I can actually deposit my soul and I'll receive mSoul back in exchange for staking. What that means is it's liquid staking. So once I'm staking my soul and getting that APY, I can still use that mSoul token in DeFi. If you remember on the Sabre app, for example, there was a mSoul soul pool so you could provide liquidity there in addition to getting mSoul rewards, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're familiar with Lido staked ETH on Ethereum, this is somewhat of a similar concept. So those are the main apps I wanted to cover. Obviously that's not everything, but I think these are some of the more popular apps that you guys would actually use. Now, before giving my closing thoughts, I did wanna cover one more thing here, and that is this tweet thread, which I will link below. So this tweet thread will be linked below, but whether you're a Solana bear or not, I do recommend everyone reads this. Basically, it goes into the factors that cause centralization on the Solana network. The two main things I want to highlight are that based on the current Sol price, it would cost over $50,000 a year to run a validator. And in addition, you're going to need $700,000 worth of Sol to stake and self-delegate. So these costs could keep increasing, so the network theoretically could get more centralized. It is worth noting that this thread was written with Avalanche in mind, so you can take it with a grain of salt, but definitely do your research on the centralization components of Solana. So what are my overall thoughts on Solana? Well, a couple things stick out here. The first is that Solana is incredibly quick and incredibly cheap, which is obviously impressive. Now with that said, as you can see with the apps that are currently available on Solana, None of them are really truly innovative. They're all basically apps that are already available on Ethereum. Now, of course, this could change. Obviously, Solana could, you know, see a wave of innovation and a ton of new developers come to Solana and build there, but I think it's probably less likely than not. Really, at the end of the day, I think most of the innovation still happens on Ethereum, and that's where the most innovative developers really are. I personally am not a fan of the centralization component, so something like Avalanche would be much more decentralized than Solana, which is something that is important to me. Now, as far as whether the yields are worth folks bridging over, if you're comfortable on Ethereum or Avalanche, whatever chain you're on, I would say at this point, maybe not. Uh, you saw what some of the yields look like, and while they were good, I don't know if they were good enough to justify moving your capital over. Of course, all of the links are going to be below if you want to check it out and see if yields have changed since the time of recording this video. So for me personally, it's not really worth it for me to be on Solana right now. Now, if you've been following the news yesterday, you would have seen that the Solana network itself went down for about 12 hours, which is not great. And just another example of how the centralization component could hurt the network in the future. So I'm of course going to be watching everything that happens on Solana and tracking what's being deployed here, but for now I'm comfortable being on Ethereum mainnet and exploring the Ethereum layer 2s like Optimism and Arbitrum. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Now thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.